Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate a Zantrex 1800 watt pure sine wave inverter. It's 1800 watts, I think it's 2900 surge watts. And I'm gonna demonstrate how I hook this up into my transfer panel so in the event of a power outage, I could power um, my house. Most importantly, the furnace and the refrigerators. Uh, just as a reference, in one of my previous videos, I'm running four of these Trojan L16GAC deep cycle batteries. So they have an amp outage rating of 320 amp hours at five hours so that's the number we're going to stick with in the calculation now they are wired in series so this here gives me 24 volts there's six volts of battery so six times four is 24 and the inverter is a 24 volt inverter now the wiring going to the batteries may seem a little small to you but they're really only like an 18 inch wire and this is just for demonstration purposes only so I'm not going to have it on long but if I did uh, were if I were to have this on uh, the right way would be definitely to get thicker gauge wires and you would use a wiring gauge calculator to figure out the exact thickness of the wires that you need now <clears throat> um, one thing to also note about this is if you're gonna do this, you should really only use a pure sine wave inverter and you definitely wanna consult with your manual as far as how to hook up the wires. Uh, the ones that I know for sure that do not have the uh, hot and neutral, I'm sorry, the, the neutral and ground uh, wired together internally is the Ames pure sine wave inverters. Uh, and the uh, Xantrexes are also a pure sine wave inverter. They come in pure sine wave and modified sine wave. And again, this is a pure sine wave and that is the only kind of inverter I would try to do this with uh, or you're gonna risk uh, uh, possibly a fire uh, and or blowing up your inverter. So the key here, anytime you connect to a transfer panel, you need to find out if your transfer panel, where it's ground, uh, where it's earth ground and neutral uh, bond point is. And on my particular setup, that point is at the transfer panel in my house. There's a bond there. So the Ames inverter uh, is a slick inverter where the uh, neutral is kind of open. So the, in the neutral is not connected to ground. Uh, Therefore, you can use the ground uh, neutral bond over at the transfer panel on the Ames pure sine wave inverters. The Xantrac inverter, however, has uh, neutral and ground bonded uh, at the inverter. So I had to get a little creative because I didn't want to create two... Um, bonding points, one here and one at the transfer panel. So what I did was, and this is a, just a typical uh, NEMA L1430, and this side here is a typical um, outlet you'd find to connect to 120 volts in your house. The reason I have this connector on here is because I don't want to connect the ground wire. So inside here, uh, we have ground and then I have the hot uh, kind of connected to both of the hots on this NEMA connector and the uh, neutral uh, is connected as well. So in order to use this, I kind of want to disconnect the ground because I don't want the ground coming over as well. So basically by putting this adapter on there, the ground wire coming from the transfer panel will never make it to the inverter because I don't have the connector. Uh, you notice there's only two prongs right here. So 
Again, uh, this is for demonstration purposes. I would not do this at home. I would not follow my directions. Uh, I would always consult with a licensed electrician and uh, get yours wired up professionally. Do not take a chance and risk any fires. So with that said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug one end of this into my transfer uh, panel uh, switch connector here and the other end's gonna go into the inverter. So uh, over here is where my connection is to plug into. And these things are kind of keyed, so if you notice the uh, that connector there has a little bit of a, a notch in it. And that will line up to a, the connection, let me see if I can show it to you, inside here. That connecting right there is the one that matches up. It might be a little hard to see, but the idea is you got to line them up, get them in there, and then it twists a little bit and locks. So that connector's in, and I might have to spin the inverter just a little bit here. Okay, so uh, obviously one side's thicker than the other. One of these blades are thicker than the other, so there's only one way this can go in. And I'm just going to plug it into the inverter. Okay, so that's plugged in. And we're going to go ahead and power up the inverter. Okay, so we can see here that it says 25.4 and it's using 2 amps. Inverter will use uh, some wattage just with it turned on. Uh, there is a power save mode you can put it on which will use even less wattage. But again, this is a demonstration. So I'm going to pull back a little bit so you can see the inverter is on. It is a 24 uh, volt DC inverter converting to 120 volts. And if we pull back even a little more, you can see here the inverter is connected to the battery, 24 volts, and that goes up here to my transfer uh, panel uh, electrical box. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go into the house and flip the transfer switch. See where I have my manual transfer switch. So basically, it's gonna be very hard to operate with one hand, but I'm on electrical power now, it's, it's up top, and then the middle switch, it shuts everything off, and then the bottom puts me in the generator power, or in this case, the inverter power. So, this refrigerator right next to me is on, it's running, so, obviously going to shut off. I have another refrigerator upstairs. So what we're going to do here is you can see it's very hard to see but if you can see uh, all my breakers are on. One thing I'm going to do is shut off any breaker that's 240 volt outlet uh, because I don't want to have that on when I use this particular setup. So my dryer is one of those circuits and the only other circuit I have like that, you can't really see it here, is my air conditioner. It's in the kind of, um, it's March, so the air conditioner really wouldn't be on anyway. Uh, so a thing to note here, the furnace itself is 120 volts. Actually, if I can get a little more light in here, I didn't expect it to be this dark, but... The furnace itself is 120 volts, so uh, I think it uses around 500 watts when it's running. And we're going to turn it on while we have this set up on just to show you that it does run it. And um, we will see if we can get this started and how much wattage we're using. So I also have an um, amp slash watt meter connected up to the electric panel. So if you see this little device down here, uh, it actually can record and show me what the wattage and the amperage is. So I'm just going to see if I can get this turned on real quick and maybe show you here. Okay, so here, it's an app on my iPad and 
you can see right now that I'm using 987 watts. So you can see that right there. That's leg one, 470, and that's leg two, or one and two, whichever way you want to look at it. And you can actually even see the voltage. So it's, I'm running 124 volts. So a little high on the wattage. Uh, I would hope it to be a little lower when we started this, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and give it a go and see what happens. Remember, the inverter outside is 1800 watts and the surge rating is 2900. It's gonna probably be a little hard to start with this running and then turning the furnace on because there's a motor in there, but uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm just gonna leave this here and then we're gonna go ahead and flip this switch now. I may not be able to do this with one hand, but we're gonna try. Okay, it's off. And we're gonna go ahead and hit it in the down position. Okay, that's inverter. Okay, so the inverter's running right now. And if you can still see some of this, you know, that's still powered up. Uh, come back to the light here is on. The light in my. Uh, Laundry room is still on, so, and let's just take a quick look. The furnace, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, refrigerator shut off. So let's come down here and see if this is refreshed. Okay, so we're using 844 watts right now, and most likely what turned off here was this particular refrigerator, so that's why we went down 100 and some watts. And we are now on inverter power. So what I'm going to try to do is turn the furnace on. So if I click out of here and I go to thermostat, we can see that the temperature in the house is 72. And it's idle right now. So I'm going to bump this up to force the air, I'm sorry, to force the heater on. And then we'll try to flip back over to the uh, wattage and see what that looks like. And then we should be able to hear the furnace come on because we're right next to it. So, <clears throat> all right, I just turned it to 73. So this should say calling for heat. Okay, the furnace just kicked on. So I'm gonna flip back over to our amp meter and you can see we're at 1126, and that's because we're at 1193. That's because the the inducer fan just kicked on, the igniter just lit, and then hopefully in a couple seconds the uh, fan's gonna come on, the blower fan, and then we'll go back down to the reading and we'll see what it says. But right now. The furnace should kick on here in a minute. So I can hear the igniter, I can hear the uh, gas, and then within a couple seconds the fan should kick on. And there it goes. So the fan's running, and we're at 1321. And notice the voltage, we're down to 116, which is definitely still acceptable. Uh, almost 117 volts, 116.8. So we're running 1300 watts now out of that inverter. You know, remember it's an 1800 watt inverter, so we're, we're still in pretty good shape. Uh, but the really cool part is, is the furnace is running. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this light out here, and that should drop us a little bit. Okay, we just dropped 100 watts, because that light in there was most likely 100 watts. We're down to uh, 1221 now. 
And we're gonna go out in the garage now and take a quick look at what the inverter is doing. But the really cool news here is the furnace is running. Now, I'm just gonna come out here and show you what this is using. Okay, so, I don't know if you can see that, but it's using 54 amps right now. So, if you took 54, 55, and times that by 22.5, because that's the actual DC voltage, that would tell you how many watts the inverter is using right now. Um, so, what we can calculate, uh, not right now, but I'm touching the wires and they're not even warm so uh, again we'd want to use bigger wires but for this demonstration we're only gonna have it running for a minute or two a few minutes what we can calculate is how long it'll run that way what we'll do is uh, have to calculate this out to estimate how long that would uh, work but you need to know the total amount of um, capacity you have in your batteries and then you could divide that by the uh, number of watts you think you're going to use in a 24 hour period or even in an hour period and that could tell you how long uh, the system will last now I can tell you that if I just used the furnace and nothing else that uses about 500 watts and in the winter time that comes on uh, probably three times an hour for 10 minutes each time so you could figure out how many watts you're using an hour and then times that by 24 and then that would give you an idea of how long this system would run uh, notice it just went down to 1117 so watch what happens here when I turn off the thermostat so I'm gonna take the thermostat and I'm gonna bump it down back to 72 and it's gonna shut off. I'm pretty sure you can hear it running. But what'll happen here, this 117 will probably drop about 500 watts. So, of course when you call the system to idle, it's it's got to take a few minutes to shut everything off. Now I heard the igniter just shut off. And then what it'll do is run for a little bit longer and then the uh, blower fan will shut off. So hopefully you can hear that. And we'll just keep our eye on it. down to 1046 that most likely went down uh, when that inducer fan shut off you know the fan that sucks out all the exhaust and then when that second one shuts off I'm guessing if nothing else shut off in the house that would probably drop down to uh, you know 546 give or take watts and what that means is I would, that means I have allowed 500 watts. Okay, that just shut off. And notice that jumps down to 600. So my furnace is off now, but I'm still using 600 watts uh, in the house. So upstairs I have a refrigerator. Uh, I have some lights on I left up there. Uh, you know, computers and stuff like that. So, uh, and again, in a um, power outage, most of that stuff would be turned off with probably the exception of the refrigerators and the uh, furnace. So, just wanted to show everyone how you know, one could power their house uh, with an inverter. Uh, you really have to know what you're doing when it comes to wiring uh, this stuff up, and uh, I would advise uh, consulting with an electrician before you try anything so you don't uh, burn your house down or get electrocuted.